really just something about being underwater and searching and hunting for something. You don't know what's around each corner. It could be an abalone, it could be a sea urchin, it could be a crab, it could be a fish, it could be an eel, it could be a cabazon, it could be a lingcod, it could be a rockfish, it could be a perch, it could be just so many things. And when the water is clear, it's just something that gets triggered inside me and probably not only me, it's probably what makes all these people come out and do this. It's just that, just something about it, just hunting something is just so exhilarating, it's so fun, it's addicting, it's all I've been thinking about for the past week. I got a text message from Gio, who has his own YouTube channel, it's called Wilderness Medic. I've been diving about uh, 15 years now, started a Started with scuba, found free diving, fell in love with it. Rarely pick up the tanks now. Before we get out and before I tell you about all the regulations, because there are a ton of regulations for abalone and the fines and penalties are severe. So you don't want to break any laws when you're going for abalone. But before we get into the regulations, Gio's gonna go over some safety things with us, especially if you're a beginner, free diver, or beginner spear fisherman, or abalone hunter, whatever you are, if you want to get in the water, there are some basic rules that you really want to follow. Hi guys, I'm gonna talk about uh, some very basic stuff for the beginner abalone diver. Biggest thing is your weight. Don't want to go out overweighted. Start off with uh, maybe 10% of your body weight in lead. You can always add more, but it's very dangerous to go out and find yourself sinking. If you do get in any sort of trouble at all, ditch that weight belt. It's not worth your life. Breathing. You do not want to hyperventilate. If you do that, you can black out a lot easier. So do a couple minutes on the surface of really relaxed breathing in and out, slow. Always dive with a dive buddy. You can get into a lot of trouble if you're by yourself. A second guy can literally save your life. Had a friend black out and he would not be here today if he did not have a second buddy right next to him to pull him out. So always double up. Today's a very flat day out here. We don't have to worry about it too much. But anything higher than that, you gotta start worrying about being around the rocks because you cannot overpower the ocean. It will bang you into them. Could knock you out or kill you. If you have a lot of current coming in this way, the coves like this can be especially dangerous because it will rip on the outside and pull you out. If that happens, do not fight it and go straight in. Come at an angle and work your way in a little at a time. When Gio and I went out, the water was crystal clear. There must have been about 20 feet of visibility. This abalone is a nice size one. It's an eight incher and it's not very deep at all. Look at that, just about three feet down. A couple sea urchins on them. Sea urchin and abalone, they share the same diet of kelp and seaweed. Now, if you look on the top right of the screen, you can see a fish camouflaged. And Geo's got it. This is a buffalo sculpin. And you can see the two long horns on the front of his head. Those are very poisonous, very venomous. So you gotta be extra careful when you're dealing the, with these fish. Make sure you hold them in the right way and don't get pricked by one of those horns. So we continue to search around for abalone in the shallow water. One great way to get them off the rocks is to pry that bar in quick before they have time to suction down and just pull that bar towards you so you have the pressure on the edge of the abalone so you don't pierce their skin on the inside. They have no blood clotting agent so if they do get their meat pierced they can bleed out and most likely will die. Now right when I got back on shore that's the time to tag the abalone immediately. One of the rules from the Department of Fish and Game. I'm sorry if this video seems a little rushed, but I got places to go. I got chocolate to eat. It was Dave Chappelle reference. I don't know if you got that or not, but but yeah. Anyway, I gotta get going. I limited on abs today. Thank you to Geo. For anybody watching, check out his channel. Take a little gander over to his YouTube channel, Wilderness Medic, and you know, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to him, share the love, spread the love. We're all fishermen, we're all in this together. But yeah, a couple things that I experienced that I must say that it's really easy to panic when you're out there. Very easy to panic. Like if a little bit of water gets in your snorkel on an exhale, when you feel like you don't have a lot of breath, it's hard not to just like, <gasps> just try to gasp for air. But you got the snorkel in your mouth, you know, it's uh, it can be frightening. It can be very frightening. So we got the safety down, the bare minimum safety tips. And in a couple days, I'm gonna be back up here and we're gonna go over the regulations. They're very strict about this stuff up here 
in Northern California. So the regulations for abalone diving. Besides getting your regular fishing license for $47 and one cent, who knows why they added that one cent. But anyway, you're also gonna need an abalone card, which is this. This is separate from your regular fishing license. It costs $22. Every person who's going for abalone in Northern California needs one of these. And there are a lot of rules. This bottom portion are the tags that you attach to the abalone that you catch. And this top section is just the rules. One of them is that the only times that you can get abalone is between 8 a.m. and sunset. Anytime before that, they might consider you poaching. The legal size abalone is seven inches in Northern California. So if you pry one off and it's under, you have to return it to the rock that you pried it off from. Also, two divers cannot share the same bag. So if you have a float tube and you're diving with someone, you can't throw your abalone in there and your buddy can't throw your abalone in there. They can't be mixed. Each bag has to be separated. Another important thing to know is that if you're on a boat and you dive for abalone and you have one and you get back on your boat, as long as it has a motor, you have to tag the abalone immediately. But if you're just diving in the water or if you have a kayak with no motor and you get some abalone, you don't have to tag them until you reach land. So you can be out there, get your limit, get your three, get your buddy his, his limit or her limit. And once you get back on shore, then you have to tag it immediately. And at the end of the year, you have to report each abalone that you caught to the Department of Fish and Game. The surefire way to know what the rules are is just to look in the Department of Fish and Game handbook, the regulation book, and that way you can avoid getting tickets. Because if you can't, if you do get a ticket, it might be a $500 fine, it might be a $1,000 fine, or they might tow your car and impound your car. You might even go to jail if they catch you poaching. So just make sure you know all the rules and regulations before you take up diving or rock picking, which is pretty easy for a beginner. So before we get into the water, there's these two products that this company sent me. And I think they're really useful for when you're outdoors like this and you need to change somewhere and you don't have any public restrooms or something like that. So this company is called Wolfwise. By the way, I'm not getting paid for this or anything. They sent this to me for free. And I just want to show you some cool products that these companies send me that I think you guys might be interested in. This is a pop-up tent that you can change in. It's by Wolfwise. It's really small, easy to transport. And it comes with a little strap here. You just pop it up like that. Open it up. And your pop-up tent is ready to change into. You're ready to change into whatever you need to. Besides the pop-up tent, they also sent me this really small camping chair. It comes with a small bag like this. And just like some tent poles, they all kind of just snap into place like that. And you got the backpack that you sit in and it just has these little notches that you put the pole tips in and that's it portable camping chair ready to go and when you're done with the portable tent small side on the ground grab both sides bend it up like that put it together hold both Corners like that. And it folds right back into a small circle. And you just put this elastic strap. So it was really murky this day and me and Sarah just wanted to get into the water. We drove all the way to Mendocino from San Francisco, which is about a three and a half hour ride. And we knew the swell was 10 feet, which is very high to be diving. And this little cove was the only place in the whole area that was calm enough for us and we, were, we felt comfortable enough to get into the water. Now the water was really murky for about 15 to 20 feet out, but as we got a little bit farther out it got clearer and the depth was about 8 feet to 10 feet. We were able to dive down and catch one limit of abalone. I didn't want to catch my limit because I had just caught mine a few other days and the season has a few more months and I wanted to save myself, save a little bit of time and a little bit of picking opportunity in the future. 
So Sarah got her limit and we just got in the water. It's just, you know, being out in the water, getting experience out there, that's what makes you comfortable. So that was the main goal today and we accomplished that. So this was our catch today. One big ab. Uh, three, here, hold on. So I increased my weight by one pound today. Last time when I was out with Geo, I was wearing 12 pounds, but today I was wearing 13 pounds. But still, when I dove down, I would float back, right back up, and there wasn't kelp to hold on to really. All it was a loose kelp that went, once you grab it, it just comes off the rock. So it was hard to stay down. Do you think? But it was fun. I think once you got into the clear waters, it was fun. We just wanted to get in the water, so yeah. we weren't trying to limit today. Do you have any tips for a beginner? No. <laughs> Go with someone that knows what they're doing, obviously from our first video, yeah. we should have known that. Um, but definitely have either a crash course or take a course, uh, or go with someone that's very seasoned, um, like Gio or anyone from our TSM group. But yeah. definitely don't try to just wing it. Like, I don't know, if you guys go out, it'll make you feel a lot more comfortable if you have someone that you can trust that you know will be there if you get into danger and come and rescue you if you need it. But yeah, I don't know, just baby steps, take it slow, and it's pretty fun. You get a nice catch like this. Mwah! Forgot my ab bar at my house, so I've got a butter knife to shuck this abalone. All I'm doing is detaching that muscle from the abalone that attaches itself to this abalone shell. All right, once you get the shell, once you get the abalone detached from the shell, it'll come right out. So I'm just removing the guts from the abalone. So what I'm trying to do is get this abalone as flat as possible. So when I put it in the pant leg and smash it on the ground, it smashes it completely even. So I just cut off the piece that attaches to the abalone shell. And you know, while I have this here, I'm going to try what people were suggesting. They said when people eat abalone sashimi, don't tenderize it. So here's a very thin piece. That's not too bad. It is still pretty slimy, so the texture isn't all that. But with some sauce, it might be good. All right, old pair of pants here. So this method, it's, it, if it works right, it should save a lot of time because you don't have to tenderize abalone piece by piece. So I'm just gonna cut off one of the legs. I'll just put this abalone in the bag here. Put it in the pant leg and give it a few whacks and see how it tenderizes. It's really tough right now, so let's see if this works. Now, I don't want to do it too hard because if I do, then the whole abalone will crack. Just want to give a few even hits on both sides. Really hard, I'm just feeling it, making sure that it can bend. If it can bend, then I know it's tender. I don't do this every day, but I figure why not now? I just ordered some new t-shirts. As you can tell, the font is a little bit different than the old ones. I've got some sweaty, some sweaties, some hoodies also, and some other designs too. So if you check out my website, www.fishermanslife.net, you can check those out. And I lowered the price on them too, because I ordered a lot in bulk this time. So you know, if I save money, then I'm gonna let you guys save some money too. It folds a lot easier. The edges are still a little bit hard, so we'll see how that turns out. But if this works, this is going to be my method for cooking abalone from now on. And this is the piece here that we're going to use for sashimi later. And I'll cut that up inside. So I'm inside, I've got my abalone that's been pounded in the pant leg. So I'm just going to cut these into about a quarter inch or so slices. Feels nice and tender. Once I get this cut, I'm just going to give it a rinse and then it'll be good to go in the egg wash and a little bit of breadcrumbs. Probably cook it in a little butter also. Give it some more flavor. Just a little bit though. And now this I'll cut into 
very thin pieces and that's going to be sashimi. So very, very thin. We're going to eat this raw with the Korean dipping sauce. So any abalone lovers out there, tell me, am I cutting it thin enough? Is this the right th thickness to be considered good sashimi? All right, we're ready to go now. That looks good. So there's the sashimi, ready to go. All it needs is some dipping sauce. Now all I've got to do is egg batter, breadcrumbs, get those prepped, put them in the pan, and we'll be good to eat in a little bit. So I got two eggs here, and I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to that. Now using the dirty hand, clean hand method, I'm gonna take my abalone, put it into the egg wash. Once that is coated, I'm gonna let all the little bits drain off. Do a very light coating in the panko flakes. And I probably saved about 20, 25, 30 minutes even using that pant leg method. So depending how these turn out, that's gonna be the method for the future. All right, now let's wait for dinner. smell like? Like the sea. Like the sea? Like the sea. Mm -hmm. Good? Yes. Okay. You still don't like it? Could you eat this whole thing? Yes. It's I like couldn't cucumber. eat that whole thing. Mm. It reminds me of more um crunchy, I guess, gooey duck. Can I have a mm. Pretty good. With no sauce? Hair sauce. What do you think? Right. Look at the camera. Your that reaction opinion. is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Burn them, please. With them sauce. It's spicy. It's not bad, right? It's like kind of neutral. Yeah. It smells like the ocean. Right? It's not fishy, <laughs> but... <laughs> you saw that involuntary <laughs> nose twitch. This is a delicacy. I like it. Alright. Try mm -hmm. a fried piece. Anything fried, hell yeah! Yeah, that one's super tough. It might be a little tough. Is that one tough here? Try this one. <laughs> this one. Oh, really salt. It's like chicken. Yeah, it is like chicken. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Tastes like tofu. Tofurgi. This is like 100 bucks right here. Mm -hmm. This is better only because it's fried. So, what does this taste like? Fried. Chicken, like, doesn't taste at all. Yeah, me and Zach said it tastes like pork. Oh, that's fried. Yeah. Like pork chop pork. Yeah. I'm losing sweater. I like this pot better though.